Hi, my name's Royce and I'm a first year MD-PhD student at the University of Pennsylvania. If you're applying MD-PhD but have no idea how to approach the two additional AMCAS essays, then you came to the right place. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the two additional essays for the AMCAS primary that MD-PhD applicants have to write. Keep in mind this is part of the AMCAS primary, so the same two essays will be seen by all the schools to which you apply. I have another video that completely covers the AMCAS medical school application timeline, so please check that out if you have any questions. Okay, let's start with the motivation for both of these essays. Look at it from the point of view of admissions committees. They want people who will be really good physician scientists and are 100% committed to this career path. And that's because MD-PhD students are expensive investments for medical schools. So with these two essays, you want to convince admissions committees that you are completely committed to this training path and that you possess qualities such as curiosity, creativity, perseverance, and maturity that would make you a good physician scientist in the future. Now let's move on to the first essay, the MD-PhD essay. This essay is 3,000 characters long, so it's shorter than your personal statement. The prompt is pretty vague too, so you might feel intimidated on what to write about. But keep in mind your personal statement should already show your motivation to get the MD. This includes your passion for clinical practice and patient care. So treat that one as your YMD essay. On the other hand, treat this essay as your YPhD and also your YMD PhD essay. So this essay should highlight your motivation to get a PhD, including your love for research, science, and discovery. It should also show your motivation to get an MD PhD. This includes how you envision a future career of science and medicine in harmony, how the MD PhD will help you achieve your career goals, and why an MD alone or a PhD alone would not be sufficient. The structure of your MD PhD essay is just like your personal statement, just shorter. So I'll say essentially the same advice that I said in my personal statement video, link will pop up over here. Your MD PhD essay should be episodic, but in this case, it should only have two or three episodes, whereas your personal statement, which is longer, has three or four episodes. Treat the intro paragraph as just another episode, but make it a little catchier to grab the attention of the reader. And the conclusion will simply be a summary of your episodes and also your reasons for getting the MD PhD. An example of an episode could be from research when you demonstrated your resilience and creativity. And another example episode could be when you met a physician scientist who successfully bridged laboratory science and clinical medicine and how that inspired you. And the approach I recommend for this essay is the same approach I recommended for the personal statement. That is to say, four steps. The first being to outline. Make a table with your two or three episodes as columns. Provide descriptions of your episodes, how that episode answers the question why you like science or why you want to pursue the MD-PhD, and also how that episode demonstrates a certain characteristic of yours that is desirable in a future physician scientist. The second step is to free write for each of your episodes. Basically, you just want to vomit your thoughts onto paper, whatever comes to mind, for the two or three episodes. The next step is to edit. Start cutting down to fit the 3,000 character limit and start diversifying your verbiage and sentence structure. And the last step is to peer edit. Send this to your research advisor. Send this to your pre-health advisor. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll have a polished draft of your MD PhD essay. Now let's talk about the significant research experience essay. This essay is very straightforward. The character limit is 10,000 characters, but your essay will probably not even be close to that value. You want to provide details about each of your research projects, even if one was just for a summer. So devote one paragraph for each of your research projects. In this paragraph, you want to include the name of the research advisors and their affiliations, the duration of the project, a few sentences of the technical details, most importantly, your contributions, any conferences and publications that resulted. And finally, you want to have a concluding sentence that provides future outlook or closure for the project. If you have multiple projects under one advisor, feel free to make them each separate paragraphs. So remember here, the key is to keep things concise. Don't focus too much on the science itself. Like I said before, only provide a few sentences, maybe even just one or two, about the scientific background of your project. If your research is not in biology, then chances are the admissions committee members will probably not be familiar with that field of science. So in that special case, you can feel free to provide extra details. So for me as a biomedical engineering applicant, I had many research projects in optics and photonics. And so I imagined that many of the committee members probably weren't familiar with that field. And so I ended up providing a few extra sentences of the scientific background 
so that they would understand what I was doing when I started describing my own project contributions. Just keep in mind that these technical details are not what admissions committees care about. This is your AMCAS application. You're not trying to sell your science, you're trying to sell yourself. It's also important that you show your failures and your thought process when troubleshooting different projects. Also describe when you were autonomous and independent and were able to take the lead on different parts of a project. Autonomy and independence are one of the most important things that the committee cares about. In terms of your writing approach, this essay is pretty straightforward. Just write about your lab projects and have your research advisor and other lab members take a look. My advice is to actually do this essay first so you don't have to worry about it and then you can focus on the other two essays for your MCAS primary. Okay, now I'm going to provide an example paragraph for this essay that I just made up for your reference. The topic here will be the mRNA COVID vaccine. Of course I have to talk about this because this is what the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are based on. And plus I'm at Penn where the mRNA vaccine technology was invented in the first place. So here we go. From date one to date two, I worked in the lab of Dr. Catalin Carico at the University of Pennsylvania. Collaborating with Dr. Drew Wiseman, her group works on developing a novel vaccine platform based on modified mRNAs transported in lipid nanoparticles. My project worked on the pharmacokinetics of the lipid nanoparticles for the coronavirus vaccine entering the body. My contributions included the planning and executing of experiments X, Y, and Z, collecting and analyzing the data, etc. I have presented my work as a poster at Conference A in 2020, etc., and published my first author paper in Journal B in 2020, etc. As a next step, we are translating this technology to the clinical setting by running randomized clinical trials in the US. So that's it for the example and all the advice in this video. If you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. It really takes time for me to create these videos, such as writing down the talking points, filming, and most importantly, editing. So showing support for my channel will really mean a lot to me. Thanks, and I'll see you later. Thank you.